Hello everyone, welcome to NYP Biology Unit 5.1 Movement. So today we're going to answer what is a movement and examples of movement. What is movement? Movement is the act or the process of moving, change of the place, position or posture. So while we're sitting in, in front of the computer or your phone, watching this video is also that you, you are just using your posture and this is a movement. Here we see that like uh, we can uh, set an example of movement in our, from the our body as well. How blood is actually moving through the blood vessels, how our muscles is working, our, our skeletal muscle help us to move our body parts, how uh, in the gas exchange happens in the alveoli. That's also a movement. And uh, last one is the uh, in our plasma membrane, how the essential nutrients get into the cell and waste materials are getting out of the cells. This is also actually the movement in biological context. So uh, let's look at a diffusion. The random movement of particles from a high concentration to a low concentration is called diffusion. This is how most substances move in or out of the cell. So we've got actually the video that now I'm going to show you here. So let's see how diffusion works. Molecules dissolved in a solution are in constant random motion due to their kinetic energy. One result of this motion is that dissolved molecules become evenly distributed throughout the solution. This tendency of molecules to spread out is an example of diffusion. But how do these molecules come to be evenly distributed? Let's start with a beaker of plain water. What will happen if we now add a lump of sugar to the water? A lump of sugar is composed of many individual sugar molecules, and even as a solid lump, the individual sugar molecules are in motion. When the lump is dropped into the water, it begins to dissolve. Individual sugar molecules move randomly and constantly from the area where they are common to the area where they are scarce. This type of motion, when molecules move from areas of their higher concentration to areas of their lower concentration, is called diffusion. Diffusion continues until all the sugar molecules become evenly dispersed throughout the beaker. The rate of diffusion is affected by temperature, size of molecules, and the steepness of the concentration gradient. Although not specifically shown in this animation, this is one of the processes whereby materials are exchanged between a cell and its environment. So you watch it the diffusion video. As you see, it's a random movement of particles. For example, you want to make sweet water. You add the sugar lumps into your tea and you're starting to... Uh, like let's say stir it and or wait for the uh, sugar lumps to dissolve. So dissolving actually substances in, in the water is called actually a solution and we call it a diffusion. So here we have uh, the certain parts where we can say what is diffusion? Um, solution, solvent, and solid. Uh, before going on uh, next slide, you have to know what is solution, solvent, and solid. Solution is a homogeneous mixture. Solvent is most of the time it's water because it dissolves hydrophilic substances. Hydrophilic substances means that they love water and they're dissolved in the water. Solute is a substance dissolved in water. So let's say the solute plus solvent and we got the solution. Remember this um, let's say the keywords. So osmosis, the movement of water through a selectively permeable membrane from low to high solid concentration. Guys, osmosis is a very important 
uh, movement for all um, cells and in biological and uh, molecular content it's really important for our body for our homeostasis so water and sugar and you know that our plasma membrane is selectively permeable and osmosis helps the water molecules to go uh, through this uh, permeable membrane remember osmosis is actually movement of water from a low to high solute concentration remember solute concentration here we have also a video that and I'm gonna just put the video and you will see now so let's see the video here diffusion is the net movement of molecules down a concentration gradient this process allows small molecules such as oxygen and carbon dioxide to cross the plasma membrane most polar molecules, such as sugars and proteins, cannot freely cross this lipid membrane. Although water molecules are polar, they are small enough to pass through the membrane freely. This special case of diffusion that involves the movement of water molecules across a membrane is called osmosis. If a molecule, such as urea, is added to one side of a membrane, it will not be able to diffuse across the membrane because it is both large and polar. Because of its polar nature, it will interact with other polar molecules such as the water. This interaction reduces the number of free water molecules on the right-hand side. With fewer free water molecules on the right-hand side, there is now a net movement of water molecules down their concentration gradient to the side with the urea molecules. Because more water molecules are moving into this area than are leaving, the water level on the right side will rise. If the osmotic concentrations of two solutions are equal, the solutions are isotonic. However, when the solutions have unequal osmotic concentrations, the solution with the higher concentration of solutes is hypertonic, and the solution with the lower concentration of solutes is hypotonic. So here, guys, um, next slide is the relationship between gas exchange and transpiration. In the previous year, we learned about the gas exchange and transpiration in plants. So, guys, you know that uh, plants also have a gas exchange during photosynthesis or even um, they can breathe, they can take the oxygen and give carbon dioxide. Um, unless they are doing photosynthesis processes. So you know that um, gas exchange happens uh, underneath the leaves because the upper leaves uh, are made of just this one cuticle, then the palisade, mesophylls, the spongy mesophylls, and we have these stomas that they're um, closed and open with the guard cells, and this gas exchange happens in the uh, guard, uh, in the guard cells, so in the stomatas. So high water vapor are going through this one, the gas exchange happens here. What about when it comes to uh, the transpiration? You know that transpiration is actually evaporation of water uh, from the surface of the uh, leaf, and it keeps uh, plants cool and being overheated. So all waters are coming to the um, from the spongy mesophylls. They turn to water vapor and through the guard cells, through thermatas. There, uh, these um, water vapor are actually uh, evaporated to the air. So uh, here we have the pyrometer experience. It's actually the apparatus to, to use to estimate transpiration rate. And here what we have is like actually. Uh, we take the uh, leafy shoot fitted tightly through a hole in a rubbery stopper as you see here and there is a reservoir and a graduated capillary tube and a bubble in the capillary tube marks the zero point. As the plant takes up water, the bubble will move along the capillary tube. And the progress of the bubble can be monitored by recording its position over the time. So, um, water movement. Um, as you know, water enters by osmosis from root airs and continues until it reaches the uh, xylem vessels. You know, how, you might think that how water is actually enter uh, the root hairs and goes up to the higher and tall trees. 
just because of the uh, water properties, adhesion and cohesive properties. So waters are actually, um, they have the adhesive and cohesive properties that cohesion means that water molecules are actually stick to each other and adhesion is like water molecules uh, stick to the certain substances. That's why they are easily uh, obtained and they're easily moved to uh, tall trees by uh, certain vessels. Uh, sugar movement. Sugar movement uh, happens through the uh, flowing vessels. As you know, there are two uh, way of the flowing uh, vessels and they take the um, sucrose, the sugar, uh, from the leaves uh, which uh, obtained by photosynthesis process and take it and distribute it to the different parts of the uh, plant. So we've got database question which is your assignment. Here we have got the graph is the following graph shows the variation in leaf plants and with tree height and the gray triangles represent individual leaf samples. The red dots represent the mean of the five longest leaves for that tree height for certain tree and green dots represent the mean of the five shortest leaves for that height of the certain tree. Now you're going to answer those questions. You're going to estimate the mean length of then the, as the height of the tree increases, outline what happens and explain what limits the rate at which carbohydrates can be carried away from the leaves. So the certain questions you're going to answer and this is going to be your assignment. Um, review questions. Um, try to answer all review questions. And if you cannot answer one of the questions, go back and... Uh, restart the lesson and watch again so you will definitely answer all the questions guys thanks for watching have a nice day bye bye